Hi, and welcome back to the homestead. Today I'm in one of our chicken coops. And as a lot of you guys know, spring is here and I feel and hear chicks in the air. So what I wanted to do with you all today is kind of go over how we raise our chicks here on our homestead because it's probably different than the majority of the people that you might know or maybe what you've read about because my husband and I live off grid. We've been living here going on 13 years now and we have been raising chicks during this time of year. I'm wearing a sweater. It's kind of cold out for the past 12 years without any source of electricity, no heat lamps, no um, heating pads, nothing like that at all. So I want you to stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how we raise chicks successfully without having any electricity and doing it totally off grid. reproducing for thousands and thousands of years without the help of us, you know? Actually, chickens are descendants of two-legged dinosaurs similar to a Tyrannosaurus rex. So they've been around a while and they haven't had any problem with having their chicks and growing and, you know, living their lives. But what I wanted to do is talk to you today about how you can raise chicks very successfully living off-grid or without having a heat source like a heat lamp or a heating pad. Because little chicks do need it warm. They're used to being underneath their mama's feathers. So they do like it warm, especially during that first week. So what I wanted to do today is talk to you guys about some ways that you can kind of uh, problem solve, get rid of some of those old ways and maybe implement other ways if you don't want to use a heat lamp or you don't have an electrical source where you need it. We raise our chicks here very successfully and how we do it living off grid with no heat lamps at all. Chicks like to be kept warm. So number one, behind me, as you guys can see, I have our wood burning cook stove. So that's where I'm gonna keep them. A lot of times you're gonna get them when they're a day or two old. You know, they're little teeny things. You know, they need to stay warm, especially within that first week. They need, the temperature needs to be pretty warm. They say about 90 degrees, 95 degrees. So I keep them, as you can see behind me, in our home right by our wood burning cook stove. So that's a great place for them. So if you're keeping them in your house, you wanna make sure that it's warm. You know, if you're getting chicks and you're just gonna stick them out in the barn and it's really cold outside, they're gonna die. So you definitely need to make sure that you're bringing them inside. Very, very, very important. So I keep them by some type of heat source. We do have a wood burning cook stove at night, we turn it down. And for a lot of you guys, if you have heaters, you know you're gonna turn them down at night. You don't want your house very warm because at nighttime you wanna have a cooler temperature to sleep, right? Well, chicks still need to stay warm because they're supposed to be sitting underneath their mommy's feathers. So what I have done, I do a couple things. As you can see over here, I have pieces of wool that I have taped up against the side. And then what they'll do is if they wanna get warm, they'll all huddle up against there and they all kind of pile up on top of one another and they keep warm. And then another way you can do is you can use either a feather duster or another kind of duster I have is made out of, um, I think it's out of lamb or sheep and it's over here. The chicks really love it because it simulates actually being underneath their mama. So I found those have been incredible. And then the other thing you guys really need to look at is when you get chicks, and you're gonna do it especially off grid, don't just get a couple. You know, get at least 20, 25, 30 of them because what they do is they're going to squish together like in a little ball and they're gonna keep each other warm. They'll help one another. Undoubtedly, you might lose a few, so having a few extra will be helpful. So another thing I do at night, since it does get colder, is I put a nice blanket 
You know, if you had a wool blanket, a nice thick cotton blanket, flannel blanket. I lay this over my brooder, and then right now I have it here because I'm filming this video. But normally I have my brooder closer to my stove, and then I just put this over at the top of it. And then that way they kind of stay warm. I leave a little area that the air can come out, but that's something else that really does help a lot at nighttime to keep them warm. As you can see right now, this is my brooder. So let's talk about what you're going to put your chicks in when you get them because there's so many different things that you can. I have gotten my chicks and put them in a little, bit, you know, one of those little plastic swimming pools. You could also put them in these totes like so. These work very well. But this year, tried something a little new. Our friend Gary, and I think he got this from the Holler Homestead. They had used one of those totes, like a 250, 100, 275 gallon tote that you would store, you know, water if you're collecting it from your roof and cut it in half. And then you just flip it upside down like this is here. And then you can use it as your brooder. You may find if you use a swimming pool or maybe these totes, these little chicks, as they get a little older, you know, when they're a week or two, they start to jump. And a lot of times they'll fly out, they'll be running around your house and all that. So I like this because it's a little bit higher. So you want to look at the container that you're going to be putting them in, all right? Next we want to look at the bedding. Now the bedding is, is very crucial. You want to keep them very dry, away from moisture and wind especially because that's really going to be detrimental to them. So the bedding, and I don't necessarily want to call it bedding because they're not like livestock and they're going to be sleeping on it. You want um, something, it's like litter because they're going to put their droppings all over the place. And the big thing that's going to make these guys sick is the type of bedding that you're going to use because from their feces, you know, that can breed bacteria. So if it's going to be on the bedding or the litter, you don't want them, you're, they're going to be pecking it, they're going to be scratching it. So the type of litter that you use is really important to make your chick healthy and, you know, laying hen or a rooster. So I have tried many of these things that I'm going to talk to you about and kind of go over the ones that I think have worked the best for me and the ones that I don't like at all. So the very first, I guess, choice that I had always used when I was raising our chicks was the pine shavings that you can get at the farm and home. But I would find in the house every year that you get dust all over the place. I mean, it's almost like, you know, we live off a of gravel road and we have the Woodward and Cook Stove and we have a lot of dust in the house anyway. But when these little guys are scratching everything, it was flying all over the place, you know, reading up on it, learning more about it. And it talks about how even the pine shavings are bad for the little chicks respiration and their respiratory system. Also, I know a lot of people are really big advocates for sand. And sand, they say, really works well when it comes to, you know, no dust. Um, also, it's very good at not um, producing a lot of bacteria because, of course, they're going to get sick from the bacteria from their feces and all that. You don't want to use sand that's fine sand or sand that you would get from the beach. You want a medium to a coarse grain sand or a construction kind of sand. So you want a thicker sand because the fine grain sand is going to go up and cause respiratory issues for the chicks. I tried something else I'm going to show you this year and then next year I'm going to go ahead and go for the sand too. But what I tried this year I really do like. So I want you to see what I picked this year. <laughs> Come on down here and I'll show you. So this is dried corn cobs and they're just crushed. There's no odor at all. It lasts probably three times longer than I was using the pine shavings before and I really do like this. I'm very, very happy with it. And it's important that you are cleaning out the litter because you don't want a lot of that bacteria to breed because then that way they're gonna get sick and they're gonna die or they may be an unhealthy you know, adult. So just make sure that. Now the other thing that I wanted to show you is when you do get your chicks and you, they're a day or two old, they don't have their mommy to show them how to you know, get around and to scratch and what to eat. You can use puppy pads like this, some paper towels, you know, in your brooder or whatever you choose if you put a little plastic tote. Put this in the bottom and then that way they can kind of get used to it and then when you put their feet in there, their little, you know, little pellets or their food, they know that's their food and their water and then they don't want to eat this. Now we also want to talk about like some of the breeds of the birds that you're going to use might be a little bit more tolerant. 
So I have to tell you, this year what I did was, I have uh, quite a few guineas in here because I adore my guineas. And I have some meat birds or some broilers, um, corns crosses that I got. I wanted some of those olive eggers. I had never had them because I have the Easter eggers, which I have the blue eggs, and I have the brown eggs, chickens. But then I wanted some so it looked good in the carton, kind of that olive color. So this year was my first year ever getting them, and so I got quite a few of them, and they all died. And come to find out that they really, really, really needed that heat lamp. So that's a chicken that definitely needs to have the heat lamp compared to some of the other ones, I think. So I learned a lesson this year. I will not be getting the olive acres unless somebody gives me a full grown chicken. <laughs> and then here's another experiment that I found. This is probably the first time that I started raising chicks this early because it is still very cold here. And my big one is guineas because guineas do not like cold weather. They're very, very tender from the first week or two of life and you have to be careful with them. So I was always afraid to start them. So what I was giving my friend down the street, Jody, and she would incubate them and then I would get them after a couple weeks after they went through that crucial period. Well, lo and behold, I got guineas. I said, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to raise them. So I got guineas and I have them inside and they're thriving better than any of the other ones. So what I, I think is the big one for a guinea, they don't wanna get wet. So if they were outside with mama and it was cold and they were running around and they got wet, they're probably gonna die. All right, so now we need to talk about food and water. Okay, we need those, very importantly, nice clean water. You need a lot of food and what I find is these little guys are running around all the time. They're scratching, they're chirping, they're jumping around. So I like to put little food bowls all over the place. Like this one likes to jump in there and do his thing. I mean, they're all over the place and they eat so much. So I'm just constantly filling up their bowls all the time. Or just make sure they have plenty of clean water and clean food. So now what are you guys gonna do when those chicks get to about six weeks, they're ready to go, they're ready to get out in that coop? Well, all you're gonna do is put them out there. You know, you can put them in some straw. We really do like to use straw here. I think it's good. We kind of do that deep mulch method where you keep putting the straw in there and the chickens keep scratching it. So um, put them in there with some straw. When they're about six weeks old, they're gonna be pretty hardy. They can tolerate to about 30 degrees or so because the thing is, like we we're saying, I was saying earlier, when you do get them, it's really important to get quite a few, 20, 25, or 30, because then they'll all huddle up together and keep each other warm when it gets in those cold nights especially. So we have been raising chickens off grid, our chicks for the past 12 years without any problem at all, except for what I just told you, this was my first year with those alligators. But it is very easily done. So I want you guys to leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys, it's your first time raising chicks or if you've been doing it a long time, tell me your favorite kind of chicken that you have right now. I'll talk to you guys later, see ya. Did you guys know that in the 16, 17, and 1800s, chocolate was consumed as a beverage? There was no such thing as a chocolate candy bar. Well, we're bringing chocolate tea back to the 21st century because it's loaded with antioxidants our body loves, and it's a great source of magnesium that's wonderful for bone and heart health. It's a great addition to your coffee machine or your French press or just along with your favorite sweetener. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com along with our brand new tea infuser, simple to use for easy steeping. Cheers! <laughs>